Folks, welcome back. James here, Townline Forge. Uh, as you know, if you've been following me, I started working on a sword, uh, Viking style. It's not as long as uh, original Viking swords were. It's kind of a miniature version. Uh, the blade is, let's see, as it stands right now, 23 inches long. Okay. So we're going to be right at about 22, maybe, once we cut in our shoulders for the tang. Uh, to our point, go all over our grind. We're probably going to lose another inch here, squaring that up and bring that to the point. So we got about 22 inches of the blade there. You can't have a Viking sword without a fuller in the middle. And as you see, there's no fuller here. But the edge is beveled kind of just to see where we need to be with the fuller. And uh, never done a fuller like this per se on a blade. Okay, uh, double sided fuller. So what I need to do is I'm going to make up some sort of a jig. Yeah, uh, not quite a spring fuller. Uh, I've been doing some research on Viking swords, how they're made traditionally, and um, one of the videos I saw of them making the Ulfbert, um, they, they did the crucible steel, the whole, whole nine yards on it, but the way they did their fuller wasn't with a spring fuller, or like you would think it was, uh, which would be two pieces of round stock on a spring that smack together make your fuller you know um, it was a hardy tool with a guide on the side of it with the fuller here so you could ride your blade down the center and you had a stop on this side every time so that way you would get it even fuller and you flip it over and do it again because we don't want a very deep fuller so we just want a little bit of a fuller uh, and I don't want to grind it in we're only about a quarter inch thick and I think grinding the fuller in will probably uh, screw me up because I'm not this is, I'm a novice at this stuff right here uh, making swords and blades and stuff so I got something in my head I saw something on one of the videos and I really want to see if I can do it and make it happen so kind of a needed tool make a tool thing so stick okay. with me uh, what I need to make this I've got some one inch solid about three and a half inches of that chamfer the ends uh, and that's going to be the hardy shank this is the plate uh, this is just some one inch by two mild steel um, structural just plain mild something nice heavy base for it that's going to sit on there like that this see I've chamfered the end this is just half by three uh, four inches of it cut to length to match the block it's going to weld on there kind of like that as a stop and when that's on there okay that's going to be on there like so. Let's see what we got here. There's some space between it. But once I flatten this down, this is, this is 4140, two inch solid by the way. Uh, got three and a half inches of that. I've got to flatten the bottom of it so it'll sit on there, get a good weld on it. And then I've got to kind of essentially dome it from this side to that side because I don't want these sharp corners on the fullering tool because when I hit when I put the blade on there and hit that, it's going to leave those marks. So I need to, the highest point needs to be in the middle. You can kind of dome there so it's not leaving marks in there. And I'm using this big of a piece and this long because I feel like once I've got everything done, you know, I've got the blade. And mind you, this will be shorter so the blade is going to just hit that stop perfectly and it won't be sticking up. So I'm not too worried about hitting that with the hammer. Besides, I'll be light blows, very controlled. What I'm thinking is I can lay the blade on there and start and not have to move the blade and get a good four inch section of it and then move half through kind of like with a chisel find your point roll to your high point set it down and just continue the fuller down just tapping uh, that's kind of my thought process it kind of they didn't go into detail on their tool or anything they didn't even talk about it I just noticed the tool that he was using in the video and that's what caught my attention because I'm making a short and that look to me like one of the best ways I've, I've seen to do a fuller and not have to grind it in and get it straight because uh, you guys know me I hate grinding um, so anything I can do to forge it to, to, to finish shape as close as possible I'm going to do so what we got to do I'm going to grind a flat spot on here then I'm going to flip it over weld it to this chuck it up in the vise and then start doming this to the shape that I want it We'll weld that on there, then we will flip it over, get our hardy shank on there, and then we'll be ready to go test it out, okay?
So I'll take you with me for, with some of the grinding, show you how I've done this out. These have already been ground, so I've chamfered the corner there, and hopefully that's going to help me get some penetration. I'm going to chamfer this corner because these are thick pieces of steel, and I want to get some good penetration in there. Let's see. Uh, make sure I'm getting in there and holding it together well. So let's get the grinder fired up. Let's get it. sure this thing is square this cross section and make sure that is square because uh, if it's not it won't sit flat on your anvil so get your magnet something like that make sure you square as well this way ish that way it don't look all crooked in your hardy hole right Right about there I'll do. Let's weld it up. Tack there. Tack there. We'll get rid of the magnet. Lay some weld. You want to fill in that gap there. Not too much over that because then it'll cause you problems on the anvil. So that's why you recess that in. That way you can get plenty of weld in there and still come out flush. shank on there it's a little warm still got it cleaned up cheated a little bit used the angle grinder to speed things up but she's clean i've checked the fit she should nice and flush into the uh, hardy hole so it move around so perfect now let's flip it over Put that in there. That way we can come back now and shape it up. We'll have a shank to hold on to it with the vise. We'll get it shaped up. Then the last piece we'll put on will be our shield, okay? So get this welded on there. expert welder but I reckon I can do something and make it stick anyway. This side looks like hammer shit. This one hold. Okay. Time to shake it. Got the corners domed over, pull it off, round it off where there's no hard edges. This thing should work just fine now. Now we need to attach the stop. The stop on the side of it like that. Alright. Check out the device here. Bring it down a little bit, get some penetration there, that way it's not the weld's not sticking up. To keep me off the anvil, like where it's at there. Yep.
ready to use. This is pretty the same width as our uh, sword. Who knows, maybe it'll be another one later if this works, but we're just going to uh, test it out. See how it works. If it works out well, we'll be using it on our live stream to floor the sword. So let's uh, get it hot and do the test run, see what it does. What do you think? Good. Fuller. Fuller. And it's plenty deep enough to where I can, once it's done, I can go in and clean it up with the contact wheel on the grinder. Okay. I guess that's what our next test is going to be. We've got the fuller beat in here. Now we're going to let this cool. We're going to take it to the grinder in there and test uh, grinding it down. See how it's gonna look. See if uh, this is the way I should do it. me it guided that line it gave me a nice clean line down the center nice and straight and that helped guide my contact wheel look at that and the contact wheel goes down in there and cleans it up just fine then we'll once we're done this is just a sample piece this isn't the sword once we're done we can go back and find them edges again then when we grind the edges after we'll grind our fuller in first then do our edges and that'll clean this line up on our fuller as well as true the edges up so i think uh this bad boy's gonna work perfectly it's uglier than crap but it does the job two inch 41 40 thick mild steel for a base half inch there put your shank on it clean it up Make sure you bevel your ends here. That way you're not leaving chop marks in the, the material. Okay. Uh, other than that, yeah. It's going to be a very useful uh, tool. All right. so, well, thank you for taking the time to watch the video. I hope it helped. Um, if any of you guys have ever thought about maybe doing one of these kind of swords and um, weren't sure how to start the fuller, this just might be the ticket. Uh, we're going to try it on the live stream tomorrow night, see if it works out well, because it worked out great on our test piece, so I got confidence in it. Um, I want to say thank you to all the Patreons. You guys are awesome. Uh, keep doing what you're doing. If you want to check out Patreon, check me out at Countyline Forge, at, or patreon.com slash Forge. Also, we have a new blacksmith group open called Countyline Forge's Blacksmith Mashup on Facebook, so go check that out. Um, 
send a uh, request to join. We'll let you in. Um, everybody's getting there, throwing some stuff around, ideas. It's, it's awesome. Everybody's getting to know each other, talking. It's a place for you to come together outside of uh, YouTube. So check that out on Facebook. Also check me out at facebook.com slash countylineforge. And if uh, you're interested, go to my Etsy shop. It's countylineforge.etsy.com. Uh, a lot of you guys asked for me to open it up. Well, it's open. Um, so see me tomorrow night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're going to be going live working on that sword, guys. Thank you for watching, and we're going to catch you on the next one.